Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Mir Joyce, co-design facilitator for open source AI definition at OSI, or Open Source Initiative. Mir, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I was curious to know about, first of all, your background, you know, and in what capacity are you joining OSI to help them with that? And then we'll talk about what is open source AI definition, what are the challenges you are trying to solve there, but let's start with you. I'm the founder of a co-design firm called Do Big Good that's based in Seattle. And we help clients to make decisions with their community by sharing knowledge and power. Uh, and we've done a lot of work on uh, state level policy in Washington state with various uh, state agencies related to health and education. Uh, and also international work um, with the Open Knowledge Foundation uh, and now with the Open Source Initiative. What is the reason to come up with a definition and what is the scope? Are we trying to talk about how do we define open source in the AI space? Are we trying to come with new lives? I just want to understand the whole idea behind open source AI definition project. So as you know, there has been this concept of open source, which has existed for many decades. Also, obviously, artificial intelligence, which has meant different things technologically over the decades. Uh, now those two pieces are coming together, but there is no single accepted definition of what does open source mean for artificial intelligence. And as a result, you have different actors with different motives defining open source AI for their own purposes. And in the worst case scenario, you have open washing, which is something that is actually a private model, private system that is being called open for the benefit of the creators, but not for the benefit of the public. So that is why uh, open, the Open Source Initiative decided that, hey, we are the stewards of the open source definition for software. Let's broaden our scope and also develop an open source definition for AI. Can you also talk about the state of open source in the AI space because sometimes we see a lot of open washing uh, where the companies use the term open source where it is not the same open source that we know. So uh, we don't really like to use our platform to, to ding people or to tell people that they're doing a bad job because we want to bring everyone into the tent. So what I can say is that version 0.0.9 .0 of the open source AI definition or the OSAID as we call it, um, has uh, four requirements in terms of the four freedoms of open source uh, st to study, use, uh, modify, and share the system. Those must be provided to the user. I mean, get more into, into more detail about that. And also there must be open weights, open code, specifically code to train and run the system. And then for data, we say we must have data information. So that is the data set used to train uh, the system or uh, sufficient information about the data set in terms of methodology and what the data set is composed of such that a skilled individual could create uh, the same or similar uh, system. So that is our goal to set forth the principles and welcome everyone in rather than saying you're out, you're out, you're out. Can you talk about what is co-design? What is the methodology? What is the process? So that folks do know where we are coming from. Yeah, so co-design uh, means to create or solve a problem with others that are affected by the problem by sharing knowledge and power over the ultimate decision. Uh, so this is the method that OSI used to create the open source AI definition. Uh, we had multiple phases of both virtual and in-person workshops and asynchronous work to uh, it, write the text of, of the, the Four Freedoms for AI. Obviously, we're working from an original version from the Free Software Foundation. Then also to decide which components uh, of an AI system need to be open in order for that system to be considered open source. Uh, and there we use the model openness framework of the Linux Foundation, which has a really great component list um, for large language models. Um, and then we also used volunteers to do some initial validation of systems, which is what you're talking about is who is open and who is not. Um, and so we have begun that work um, and we do have uh, initial report on our forum, 
But yes, uh, working around the world uh, with people of many different relationships to OSAI, um, creators, uh, people who want to implement systems, researchers, also uh, users. Now talk a bit about uh, why did OSI, you know, took up this initiative? What is their idea, their goal with this project? So I would say it's, it's what I said initially, just um, understanding the value and importance of the open source definition for software and <clears throat> seeing how the absence of that kind of broadly accepted definition was creating a bit of chaos in the open source AI space and saying, hey, uh, defining open source is part of what we do. And we're seeing this new area, this new technology where there is not such a definition, we're seeing the challenges creating by an absence of agreement and we want to step in and solve this problem. Talk a bit about what are the scope of open source in the AI space and what is the scope of this code design process there? So the scope is those three types of components I mentioned previously. So the weights, which is the weights and parameters, um, and we want those to be open. Uh, and then there's the code, the software, and specifically want the code that was used to train and run the system to be open. And then there's a third component, the data. Uh, and there uh, we want um, either the data set to be open or because of the reasons that you mentioned, sometimes uh, creators cannot make their data set public. And so there we just have a request for um, methodological information, scope, provenance, data cleaning, labeling, basically for a user to really understand what is in the data. Um, but yes, there's, there's a lot of challenges around data openness requirements, and we took those into account when we, uh, with our co-designers, developed this um, recommendation or this requirement on, on data. Can you also talk about what kind of participation is there with the wider industry? Uh, is it, are you folks just working within OSI or you're working with other players as well? Yeah, so um, the people that have been most active on the, in the co-design work, that is they volunteer to help review a system, they volunteer to be uh, in a virtual work group, uh, they have uh, agreed to have their names and affiliations made public for the sake of transparency. And so, yes, we do have uh, creators, um, including uh, corporate corporations developing AI systems. Uh, for example, we have uh, Meta, a couple of folks from Meta are in our work groups, uh, folks from Google. Um, folks from Amazon have also been extremely active, particularly on the forum. The forum is another place where people can be involved. So we have folks for, from all over the world, 25% of our um, work group members are actually from Africa. So it's a really international group and also includes um, these big corporate actors that obviously have so much influence. Can you also talk about if there are big names, big players in the space also involved with this project? We are now at the stage of our process where we are seeking organizational endorsements. So yes, at this point, uh, we are reaching out to um, these uh, technology companies as uh, actors in the space, as organizations versus working with their employees as individuals. So yes, that's, that's the answer to your question. And can you also give us the state of progress that you folks have made so far, or is too early to talk about it, how further we are from having a definition of you know, open source AI? So we are actually really close. Um, we are at 0 0.0.9. Uh, we are going to have release candidate one, RC1. We hope to have the content for that by the end of this month. And then we will be releasing the stable version uh, next month at All Things Open. So that's the end of October. So we have been working on this for two years, quite a long time, but we're actually almost at the end, which is really exciting. So Gen AI is uh, becoming a very you know, critical piece of modern technology. Uh, which also means that, you know, we should have these kind of, you know, things in place. Can you talk about the importance of this project at this time 
when Gen AI, AI is about to retake, I mean, AI has been around for decades, but you know, Gen AI has rekindled all interest in it. So talk about the importance of this project. Uh, we are coming up on regulation that has gone into effect in the EU. The EU AI Act came into effect in August 1st. Um, we have a law that uh, has been passed by the legislature in California, in the US, SB 1047. Uh, so we really are beginning to see regulation uh, around open source AI starting to happen both uh, nationally and internationally. And this is the moment where definitions of open source AI will become locked in. And there will be an assumption, oh, this is what open source AI means. And then you're, you're kind of effectively editing or changing that assumption. And so that's why we want to get in right now with a definition that reflects global consultation, reflects the values of open source. Uh, and that's the urgency for now. As you said, you know, the things are already shaping up, uh, but is there, are you still looking for people to get involved? And if yes, how they can get involved? So we do, still do have an opportunity to, yes, please give feedback on version 0.0.9. 0 .0 .9. Uh, you can do that at the OSI website. Uh, we have a HackMD instance where you can comment on the definition. And we also have a forum where you can post and respond to posts by others. Uh, that is public if you create a free account. And we also have bi-weekly virtual town hall meetings where you can talk with me and the executive director, ask questions of any kind. So uh, yes, we would love for you to continue to be involved and to help make this just the best definition that we possibly can. This market, this field is evolving. So even this project, you know, the way I look at it is that uh, it's, it's less about uh, destination and more about journey because things will evolve. Uh, the definitions keep evolving with time also. So what does the long-term process look like? Or what is the long-term goal of this process? Uh, if you can talk about that. So we do have the goal of creating a definition that is stable, that can be used in October. Uh, we don't want to put stakeholders in the position of, hey, wait, we're still working on it. We're still working on it. So we do want to hand over something that is stable that people can then put into their own policy making in October. And also uh, the technology keeps changing. Uh, the preferred form that I talked about, uh, open weights, open code, data information, is specifically referencing technology related to large language models. And te the technology underlying the concept of AI has changed, will continue to change. So we do have uh, we'll have a, a maintenance plan uh, similar to maintenance plans for other open source projects uh, that will continue to make sure that the open source AI definition is relevant and accurate into the future. Mir, thank you so much for taking time out and join me. Not only talk about uh, the, the work that folks are doing at Open Source Initiative, but also the bigger picture where uh, things are heading in terms of open source and AI. So thanks for those great insights. And I would love to chat with you folks again when more progress uh, are made on this project. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.